Well, we're back for the season finale. Season three, baby. <laughs> season three, baby. I think this has been the longest one out of the three that we've done. At least longest time from start to finish. We missed a week. We did miss a week. But we watched six sci-fi movies. We did watch six sci-fi movies. Two of them had Scarlett Johansson, her, and Under the Skin. And there, there was a clear loser on this one. It's going to be, I think, tough to determine what my favorite one was, but I clearly know yeah, which one I was agree. my least favorite right <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> I, I definitely agree. But we'll rank all the movies and talk a little bit about them at the end that we watched for this season. Today, we watched 12 Monkeys. Yes, today we watched 12 Monkeys. Can I bring up my topic? Can we yeah. introduce that? Go ahead. Okay, so going into season four, I guess, we're going to maybe oh. shake some things up a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> and one of the one of our ideas was that we would maybe have like one or two topics to speak about before we actually got into our discussion on the movie, just to kind of like ease into it, I mm -hmm. guess. And yeah. Maybe talk about some, I guess, news that we think is interesting, I yeah. guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what I have today is there was a new trailer that came out for Avatar 2. Uh. And I think I think I, I have I have a theory on what the plot is gonna be. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was thinking it'd be cool to like, you know, we've got it documented here me proposing this theory and then when we actually go see the movie we'll see see if i was right all right what's what's your <laughs> what's your proposal or your guess i think your prediction it is going to be the exact same plot as the first I was one about, i was gonna say that too <laughs> I was gonna say that's my guess too. I'm like, it's gonna be people want to use their land and they're not gonna like it, and it's gonna be a bad fight against nature versus the industrial, like you know, like colonizing mm -hmm. people. And you know how the first one is kind of like the the same almost plot structure as something like Dune or like Dune uh, dances with wolves. The yeah, Last Samurai. Is, is Last of the Mohicans one of that too? No. Uh, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie. Where basically so. there's an outsider that joins up with the Undermine group basically and they like form a revolt and take back the, or then <laughs> they, they revolt against their oppressors, I guess. If that... I don't remember, man. It's been a while <laughs> since I've seen that movie. Well, like, think about like the like the story structure we've just talked about. Like, yeah, the, I don't remember that in Last of the Mohicans, though. I I haven't seen most of the movies we've yeah. listed, but <laughs> but I yeah. know that Dude, I fucking, except for Dune, Dune and Avatar. You've never seen Dances with Wolves? Uh uh. Dances with Wolves is really good. That's my <laughs> that's my favorite one of like that same. It's like the exact same story. Yeah, like <clears throat> they join some society and they're like oh it's good actually like like an undermined society <laughs> and like they learn that the group that's been undermined isn't so bad and then they yep. rise up against their oppressors yep so but now it's in water for avatar exactly so it looks like from the new trailer that there's a different society of avatar blue people that live under the water and they have slightly lighter color blue skin than isn't than the ones we know isn't the aren't the same characters in this movie though? yeah 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 it's the same characters but it's gonna be about them becoming part of the water tribe now and like learning the way of the water and then they are gonna learn the way of the water <laughs> because there's Do you a think line they'll say that in the movie yes the way of the water <laughs> has been shown to you <laughs> well child the, the there's a line in the trailer where they say something like, you are an outsider. Like you come from above the ground. Like you do not know our ways. <laughs> and then and then there's also scenes of you the would, humans you, attacking them. You would them never learn humans. our way, outsider. I would never trust you. <laughs> but maybe at the end, when you have shown your worth, <laughs> we will team up against the humans. <laughs> right, so that's, that's my theory. It's gonna be the exact same plot 
Except he has to join up with the water tribe now How to fight long, the humans. All right, so I don't know if we. So for anybody who's been somewhat following that movie, the runtime is going to be like two hours and f- four, fifty minutes. I ooh, which I, is yikes! Or forty minutes or something like that. Mm-mm. You're way off. Oh, no. Three ten. Oh no! <laughs> this movie's three hours and ten minutes. Oh no! How long was the first movie? That is a great question. Three hours is a lot to ask of somebody. I know I've said that before. But, but like, it's the damn. sequel of the highest grossing movie of all time. <laughs> they, yeah, but like Titanic was the highest grossing movie of all time at one point, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I think Harry Potter was too, right? No, that was after. And it's, was it? it's always been Avatar, Avatar forever. I think that they think this is going to be an event, but like people don't love avatar like they love fucking star wars or yeah. endgame like to be honest i think it's just kind of a fluke that never, avatar yeah, is I'm the not. highest grossing movie of all time <laughs> it's because everybody had to see it in 3d and the 3d is uh-huh. more expensive too to go like a ticket to the 3d movie you know yeah and the 3d was so amazing that's why people went to the theater i don't i don't think there's a gigantic avatar fan base the th- Maybe the, there is, man. The actual like visual well, it's 3D. Well, definitely of- like I feel like I feel like you and I especially have like, and we have friends outside of us too, like super into nerdy shit. And I've never heard of an Avatar like fan. Yeah. <laughs> like, who is into Avatar? Please let us know. <laughs> like that, I I feel like they think this is going to be an event movie. Like we've mentioned before, that uh-huh. like the longer movies should yep. be event movies. Like, but also James Cameron makes long ass movies too like titanic yeah Yeah, who knows if it's good that's cool (laughs) yeah i I mean i hope it's good but i i'm I'm an avatar hater i'm just gonna come out and say it if it (laughs) hasn't been apparent bro the first one was two hours and 42 minutes all right you should watch it all right and for anybody who's watching that like same type of story that we've been talking about um there's a lot of movies dune uh the last samurai with tom cruise you've never seen that one either Mm-mm, never yeah. seen that one um dance with wolves and did we did i mention another one i would say watch dance with wolves it's worth it's worth your time i'm sorry i'm looking up the uh, last of the mohicans to see <laughs> if i was right <laughs> i think it's about fucking two indian tribes fighting i don't know if that's way <laughs> off okay the french but, like, and indian war it says i feel like how old is okay. three trappers protect the daughters of a British colonel in the midst of the French and Indian War? Yeah, bro. I don't know. I don't know how accurate we're gonna be on the Last of the Mohicans lore right now. <laughs> yeah, Drew. Why are we trying to dive deep? Uh, I would. I would not be surprised if that's what happens in Avatar at all. Yeah, I agree. Is that our next big movie that's coming out? Um, that and Whale. And whale. Mm-hmm. The, before I, the end I, of the year. I know nothing least. about whale except for the one trailer I watched, and obviously that thing with Brendan Fraser being like applauded, which, mm-hmm. which that was the biggest hype. I feel like that's why I, I can watch too. It. Can yeah. is such a probably like the most prestigious film festival, so that makes me really excited. Like not, you wouldn't say it's the least uh, politicized or anything like that. You know, like it's what the most mean? like legit one. It's not like. A fucking performance you know a show can yeah well it's like it's it's basically like it's like it's not like getting an emmy or so i mean okay not to like shit on those words but you know like a, a lot of it is like fucking you know how like working s- in hollywood and shit well you know how like sundance is like the uh is like the indie film thing well it's a one of the biggest film festivals in the u.s yeah can is like the biggest film festival in the world well, oh really as far as i or it's like just I'm like super, loop. maybe not like biggest in the world but like one of the most prestigious like if you win like best film at can it's like you need to watch that it, yeah like i'm pretty sure parasite one it's called like the pomodore or something is what the uh the award is called i'm pretty sure parasite one parasite's a good movie i but, like that movie and then i'm pretty sure pulp fiction also won at some point damn okay like can is it's 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 big to to get your movie in can and to to win the palma d'or yeah apocalypse now so 
That's nice. A little movie history lesson. <laughs> yeah. Or just not, I guess not history, just his lesson. <laughs> so, yeah. Looking forward to Whale because... That's sick. Of Yeah. When, and when something gets crazy, crazy, crazy audience reaction, it can. You know it's going to be crazy. You okay. know it's going to be worth checking out for sure. Do you know when that comes out? <laughs> Gotta check one more <laughs> Let time. Let me whip out the phone again. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. the whale comes out before avatar i'm pretty sure december 9th is the whale sweet and avatar is december 16th so the next weekend oh god avatar. <laughs> i really am i hope I it's, it's good i bet it's gonna make a fuck ton of money it's yeah it's gonna but how though? I don't understand. It's a fucking avatar. Nobody likes it too. Nobody like, likes it. That's but, what I'm saying. But everybody's still gonna see it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus. Hell yeah. Ten minutes of avatar. <laughs> Ten exactly minutes of avatar Andy. conversation. <laughs> so I just edited the last episode, which was on upgrade. And the last like 10 minutes we're just talking about sonic <laughs> like, yeah, yes. i swear like we only talked about the movie for 15 minutes and then just talked about sonic the hedgehog and the release of sonic frontiers for the That's rest of the time awesome. i All love right. that speaking of which speaking of not being on topic <laughs> yeah all right let's start talking about 12 monkeys i will say if you want to watch if you haven't seen this movie it is one of those like movies that benefits not knowing the twist so if you haven't seen it go watch it yeah um and we'll explain it a little bit more too because it can maybe get a little confusing so if you haven't watched it go watch it and yeah anyways we're gonna start talking about it mm -hmm. <laughs> so i think one of the things that like we said it can be confusing it's it's a time travel movie mm -hmm. which time travel shenanigans are always wacky and always wacky and crazy <laughs> and hard to hard to decipher a little bit sometimes it can be a little wild this made me yep. want to watch primer which is probably the craziest yeah time I, travel you've told movie. me about you've told me about primer i've never watched through it though <laughs> mm-hmm but it's like it's like the movie where they have like people like actually like building out fucking diagrams and shit for it isn't it like mm-hmm so yeah, maybe we'll talk about Primer eventually, but this one's not that complicated. This one's not that complicated. So we have Bruce Willis, he's from the future. It's never specifically stated in the movie, but apparently in marketing material, they revealed that he is from the year 2035. Yeah, actually now that you mention it, I don't know if they do say it. In they the don't, movie. they don't say it in the movie. 2035, mm -hmm. sweet. So I guess there's been a crazy virus that wiped out most of humanity and everybody's living underground because the air is just like toxic to breathe. Mm -hmm. But somehow animals are still able to live. Yeah. It was, uh, it, the disease was only targeting humans. So they decide to send the bunch of scientists underground are just using prisoners to just send them back in time and learn shit about the virus so that they can send the scientists back in time and study it and then have humans be able to live above the ground again and they send bruce willis back to figure some stuff out because he can remember things good yeah <laughs> yeah he, he's good at remembering he's good at remembering things and their time travel stuff isn't that crazy so they isn't like that well attuned yet, you know, like it's not that accurate where they like are able to send them. So they send them back in 1990 and the, the, and the virus was released in 1996. So it's like this whole movie kind of plays as like an interaction between Bruce Willis interacting with like the slowly progressing years of like 1990 to 1996 and the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, there's a there's a line in there where they're explaining the time travel and like why it doesn't really work so well, which I thought was great. They say it's a science, not an exact science. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was good. Um, I did want to mention, so 
Obviously, Brad Pitt is in this as well. He plays the other guy that Bruce Willis's character met in the insane asylum who like there's kind of like he's a wild kinda, goose chase around him. He's kind of like the antagonist. Yeah, and, until the end and you're like, oh, he was just kind of doing his own thing. They're just interpreting the past wrong. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah. The scientists in the future just like, oh, this 12 monkeys group led by Brad Pitt's character is going to do something, but... If yeah, really... so I guess that's the twist. Yeah. Well, th- I guess there were a bunch of references to the 12 monkeys that had been left that the scientists had been studying and thought that they were the cause of the virus. Yeah. And that was Brad Pitt's group. But it turns out all they really did was let out the animals from the zoo. Yep. But it was the other guy working with the dad, Brad Pitt's dad. Mm-hmm. It was... That guy was the one that ended up uh, releasing the virus. And he was at the, that character was at the like book signing event at the beginning. Yeah. What did he say to her? Like that he agreed with her that did like, did he say something that like humans were the ones that were like fucking everything up? Something weird. That's interesting. I wish I would have paid more attention to that now. Like he said some, I don't, I, I like, you don't know that it, it's that important at the time. So that's yeah. why I don't remember exactly what he said, mm-hmm. but doesn't he say something where like overpopulation is going to ruin us? Like humans yeah. are the ones, I know they say it at the end, but like humans are the endangered species or whatever. But I think he says something about like overpopulation and how, like humans are the ones destroying the planet. Something like that. So, that makes sense. So I'm thinking that still Bruce Willis's character still sort of causes the virus to be released. Like I know that he thinks it's his fault that Brad Pitt's that he gave Brad Pitt the idea because the the entire movie you think that Brad Pitt is the villain, like yeah. going to release this virus, and Bruce Willis thinks that the first time he came back in 1990, he put the idea in Brad Pitt's head to mm-hmm. wipe out the human race. But was it actually the doctor, based on what her patients were saying? I mean, she doesn't really bring up Bruce Willis during her lecture. Mm-hmm. Because her, most of her evidence is based on the World War One guy. Speaking of which, the photo of Bruce Willis pointing at the at his other like <laughs> yeah. soldier in that photo <laughs> is so hilarious. Good. The comedic timing. Yeah, it was like the Bigfoot photo of him, just like, oh, there he is. <laughs> there, there are some funny ass parts in this movie where Terry Gilliam, the director, who is in Monty Python, like you can tell he's got those comedic chops because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> there are some genuinely funny parts. So I was reading something online and I was like, oh, that's just after this movie to confirm some things before this podcast. And I was like, oh, that's kind of an interesting thought. It was someone was like, do you think they were using him because they because they obviously they're working from the future. Mm -hmm. They know a lot more. Do you think they always knew that he was going to get shot in the airport? Just to like get rid of loose ends. Yeah. Because time travel can break stuff. Mm hmm. That's a good point. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of like just the fact that they were sending people back in time sort of caused it. I mean, because it, it, if if the doc, maybe there was something too where there was like, because he was given the gun and he's like, you have to shoot him. And then like, I think in the thing, it was like, who are they referring to? Like, how did he know to run to go shoot the guy in the yellow jacket? Like they're on the run. They didn't come there for that. Well, like, did he did he say to just shoot him or something? I don't know. Like they he, they came and gave him a gun. Yeah. So they so, so they had to have known what was like going to happen. Well, okay. So because Bruce Willis calls back to them at the very be- at the very end to tell them that the twelve monkeys was just a wild goose chase to mm-hmm. like stop following them, and that's why he's like, "You're a hero. You're the one that told them to like st- to like change." their investigation i guess into what was going on Mm -hmm. and i think that they had figured out that that was the moment where because that guy getting on the plane was him going all over the world to release the 
virus. So had he had Bruce Willis killed him right then and there, it would have only been released in Philadelphia. Like Philadelphia is probably fucked. But wasn't but wasn't the objective the entire time to send a scientist back in time to study it? Didn't they say that at the beginning? I thought that they were just trying to like prevent stop it, it from or happening. Stuff, maybe, yeah, I don't know. Because maybe by Bruce Willis going back and being like, oh, like don't worry about the 12 monkeys it's a wild goose chase they were able to go through their time travel shenanigan because at that point he ripped out the tooth um yeah they, they couldn't trace him but when he did the phone call they were able to trace him is what his time travel homie said <laughs> and they gave him the gun so maybe by bruce willis saying that the 12 monkeys was a wild goose chase they were able to send the other guy to find out where <laughs> that that like that was the source of it and they're like oh shit like bruce willis is here right now like at the very least you can tell that this movie makes you think a little bit more i feel like that out of all the sci-fi movies this has been the one where we're like <laughs> trying to figure it out trying to more. figure it out a little bit more i don't know when i when i think of a good sci-fi movie i think of like like a weird thought that like you can just keep pondering you know yeah no well i was i still think that the just the the act of sending people back in time to figure like it's a paradox right like yeah by sending people back in time you like create the idea that there is going to be some sort of apocalypse at this sort of time due to a virus and that like idea gets put into people's heads where the doctor lady gives the lecture about it and then that guy the 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 lab researcher gets the idea mm -hmm. to be like oh i have the ability to do that and then he releases the virus which then makes the scientists in the future send the people back in time and the, the cycle just repeats itself yeah because time <laughs> that, that that's what i think yeah yeah it's a weird is, did the paradox get broken probably not no because he it was able to escape and release the virus mm -hmm. but somehow bruce willis was there at like multiple times during his life maybe the fact that he like crossed paths with his past self meant that he had to die mm -hmm. because he was breaking the space time continuum or whatever yeah what was the stuff about the florida keys there were like a bunch of references to the florida keys like is that where they were going or possibly i don't i, don't, I couldn't I maybe maybe that's where because there when he was in the hospital the first time the there was a guy in the mental institute as he was like trying to escape that was like the florida keys are nice at this time of year and then the next time when he kidnapped what's the florida the lady, keys did you say you don't know like hold on, I'm gonna like what up. was the point like there were a bunch of references to it and then i think they when when he kidnaps her there's a commercial on the radio about the the one commercial that was like this is a special message directly for you like the Florida Keys is like the greatest place to go. And he was like, oh, we need to go to the Florida Keys. And I'm pretty sure that's where they were like going to in the train station. Or were they in an airport? I think they were in a tr in the airport, right? They were headed to the Florida Keys. Or maybe the guy that was that had the virus was going to the Florida Keys. But I think maybe the Florida Keys was like, it seems like the... We don't know everything about like what else they can like interact with in time because they were able to re piece together the voicemail. I'm just thinking that maybe the they can send messages too. Well, like, what what if, what if them? Yeah, sending messages. So maybe them. That's what I was saying earlier, and I was like, do you think maybe they were just they knew he was gonna die the whole time, so they was like, go to Florida Keys, go to Florida Keys, because mm -hmm. they wanted to send them to the airport. Well, and then there were it was basically like. Other crazy people were yeah. also time travelers, uh -huh. which that's which, I mean, a crazy they, they, thought. They, they all were going pretty crazy too. Like, yes. I mean, even 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 like I feel like the way I read the relationship between 
Bruce Willis and that girl is like at the end it felt like the girl wasn't really in love with him. Per- I mean, she had affection for him, obviously. Some Stockholm syndrome yeah. thing. But I I felt like she was like she seemed a lot crazier, you know. Like she seemed like she was kind of losing it too. Yeah, but like if you were figuring if you were like bro, if someone just started fucking popping in in your life and like with a fucking shot up leg and shit and he's like we're all gonna fucking die and then just he just disappears again wouldn't you be like what the fuck but like his story was corroborated so it was corroborated but wouldn't that still make you be like am i fucking crazy right now i think you'd be a little hysterical and you're like fuck i gotta stop the end of the world it's all in my hands (laughs) but then wouldn't you stop and be like why is like why 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 am i the one to stop the fucking world right now like where did this like thing come from just fate, bro. It's it's your destiny. It's your de- <laughs> <laughs> to stop the T virus from being released. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> when 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 destiny calls, you answer, bro. <laughs> because because be apparently in this in this universe, everything's pre written. Like yeah. <laughs> no matter what you can't change the future uh i also wanted to mention you you mentioned in the movie you're like how how does uh brad pitt's eye do that i did look it up i also looked it up yeah he so so the way he gets so i get i guess because he's such a heartthrob such an attractive man that he wanted to get away from like that like persona that he built up so like one of the ways they did it to like help play off like the nervousness of his character and stuff um was to use a painted co- eye contact mm-hmm. and that's why his eyes or one of his eyes is like you know looking looking the other way yeah just to make him seem a little bit more crazy well also i lo- i also found that when they shot this movie like when it was in production brad pitt was still kind of like an up-and-coming actor mm-hmm. and they didn't have to pay him as much but by the time they like finished editing it and it came out like a bunch of stuff like Seven and a bunch of his like big movies that kind of made him a mm. household name had come out. And then at that point, he was already like kind of a superstar actor and they kind of got away with yeah. paying him the up and coming salary. <laughs> yeah, back then it was it was Bruce Willis was the he was the big money maker of that movie. I also read that Terry Gilliam didn't like how Brad Pitt was originally portraying the like fast talker crazy person Mm -hmm. and they like tried to send him to an acting coach but it still didn't work so how they ended up getting him to act crazy the way he did was they it says that terry gilliam just took away his cigarettes (laughs) (laughs) that's how he was able to deliver that performance that's beautiful Mm mm-hmm a good director knows how to play to his actors i guess (laughs) exactly (laughs) The theme for this movie is awesome. The theme song is so good. The like little like it's kind of like a waltz almost, I guess. Yeah, it sounds like it's done on like an accordion or something. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. so good. I'm adding that to my movie score playlist. I really like that you have a, a playlist that's movie scores because I tried to do it when I learned about yours, but it's hard. I have I have a, I have a bigger video game playlist thing. That's my mm. my one. My thing I. I don't like looking for video game music because a lot of the video game music that I want, like the Mario songs, which mm-hmm. are so good, yeah, just don't exist. Like the, I mean, like they're not really on like streaming, you know, like the, yeah. the actual like Koji Kondo versions. That's what I want. Yeah, I don't want somebody. That makes sense though. Why you would make a film one? Because it's like not, it's not like messed with. I guess it's <laughs> yeah. not like tampered with. Yeah, no. Because like all this, all, a lot of the music that I just like having a playlist of video game shit I listen to is just a lot of remixes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's why I don't like the video game music is because it's mostly just remixes. Mm-hmm. That's fair. But so who knows? <laughs> Back to 12 Monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, Who knows if like, what if all crazy people are just time travelers? And because they keep, there's also like something that they kept mentioning where, like, (laughs) that's that's the twist of the movie. Every homeless man is a time traveler. Well, they keep (laughs) they keep saying like, like the my God, the homeless. We're not there from our time. (laughs) 
<laughs> and a far more advanced than we could have ever imagined. All right, the title of this one is going to be The Time Traveling Homeless. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, they, they're... Maybe this is what the um, the scientist guy says to the doctor at her lecture, but he says something about how the real crazy people are the ones like that are partaking in uncontrolled breeding and mm -hmm. consumerism and destroying the planet. Like these people that have this, what did she call it? The Cassandra effect or whatever that think that they are time travelers to save the world i guess like yeah. maybe they're they're not the crazy ones like regular people are the crazy or ones because they're happened, the one or maybe it's happened many times <laughs> you think so the cycle repeats itself. yeah maybe 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 it's not the fact that it's like stuck in that specific time loop. maybe they just keep delaying it a little more and more you think like oh so it always the apocalypse always happens, but they just like keep pushing it back, pushing so there's it back, always, pushing it back. Yeah, there's always that future and there's always our present, like just kind of moving along. <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. I could buy it. Yeah, I could buy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that goes against the rules of the movie because apparently everything's predetermined. <laughs> yeah. But, but maybe all of that was predetermined. Who exactly. Knows? I think one of my favorite scenes in this movie was the the car scene when he very first kidnaps her and they're like driving away and he's like all emotional listening to the radio and she's like freaking out. I feel like there's something so interesting about a scene where two characters are like feeling too like in two like, totally different realities and reacting very appropriately to like yeah just like two drastically different emotions yeah and but both read like oh yeah if i was in her position that'd be terrible yeah no like it makes complete sense like she's just freaking out and he's like so excited to experience all this stuff that he mm -hmm. doesn't have in his world I loved that scene. Yeah, that was a good scene. And then there, there are all the there's some background stuff too with the Florida Keys ad and the kid in the well, and then the music he just is hype about. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. This movie is one of the movie one of I those. Think, I don't know if it's a. Do you think it's a hidden gem? I feel like it's not that underground. I don't know. I feel Back like back in the day, I feel like mo maybe more people were aware of it and watched it. But like now, I feel like it definitely has a a little bit niche, of a cult niche. following. Yeah, maybe, I think so. Let's see. Let's see how much money this movie made. That's how we'll know. Okay, budget was about thirty million, and it made about one hundred and seventy million. So it did well. It did well. The interaction between the two of them was just so good. Like mm -hmm. they had really good chemistry. I agree. And just like how the characters change was also like super believable because she like, I mean, it seems like she's convinced him that he's crazy and then he's kind of convinced her that she's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but actually you learn that he, well, because it seems like he now believes that he's crazy and then she's trying to convince him oh no your future like, right. is, is yeah. real <laughs> then it just turns out he's just trying to stay with her yeah he knows what's up maybe i don't know it's kind of ambiguous but it kind of seems like he knows reality i could yeah i could i think that's very plausible for sure mm. and then my last thing is when bruce willis and the doctor character are when they like first go into that like kind of homeless camp and the one guy attacks her, like he tries to rape her and Bruce mm -hmm. Willis kills the guy. Mm -hmm. That made me think of like, that could be a good formula for like a character relationship for a Hulk movie maybe. Cause like he like kind of hulks out and kills this guy and she's <laughs> all scared of him. And he has to be like, he has to calm down and become Bruce Banner again and yeah. show her that he's a nice guy. and has good intentions, he promises. <laughs> <laughs> and like, she like slowly learns to love him, you know? Yeah. But like, sometimes he hulks out and is <laughs> crazy rageful Hulk. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I was like, hmm, that could be a good Hulk, <laughs> Hulk character, yeah. Hulk character relationship for. I don't want to see Betty Ross anymore in Hulk. He needs a, a new, no, new love interest. Maybe they could bring her back, but has, I don't was, know. has Betty Ross been in any other one besides? I feel like the only Hulk media I've consumed was like the one with Edward Norton. And then there's the 2003 Hulk as well. I never watched Betty it. Betty Ross. Betty Ross is the main. That she's like. She's like his Mary okay, Jane, I'm pretty sure. I guess I guess even Peter Parker has uh, Gwen Stacy and fucking, yeah, Mary Jane. Mm-hmm. So but he's... Gwen Stacy gets killed. Whatever. Whatever. Fuck Gwen Stacy, bro. Why? <laughs> because she gets killed? <laughs> it's Mary Jane, bro. Peter Parker is supposed to be with Mary Jane. Yeah, but I like Gwen Stacy. Gwen Stacy died, dude. Yeah, she's not in the picture anymore. <laughs> Gwen Stacy's supposed to stay there, okay? We we could have Spider Gwen from another universe, but yeah. main 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 timeline Gwen, she's one of the few sacred comic characters you can't bring back to life. She's dead. You have to you well, can't bring back sacred Gwen's ones. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they're very like Uncle few. Ben. Why does it have to all be around Spider Man, Uncle Ben? Well, what about Bruce Wayne's parents? Oh yeah, they're never coming the, back. Are those they? are the sacred ones. Bro. Every single, you're right. Every single person, or I guess there's a, I, yeah, pretty much that they're just dead. Because <laughs> the the joke is that nobody ever dies in comics; they always come back. Mm-hmm. But they're a handful. Uncle Ben, Bruce Wayne's parents, Gwen Stacy, the original Captain Marvel. I guess Jor-el stays dead. Everybody on Krypton stays dead. <laughs> <laughs> a whole race of people on another planet. Ah, but you got the bottle city of... Is, is it Kandor? It's been a minute since I <laughs> consumed any Superman media. Oh, I couldn't tell you. I think it's the bottle city of Kandor. Anyways, do you got yes, anything else you want to you wanna mention on this movie? Oh, yes. Actually, I do. So, I have a couple of things, actually. Okay, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. So... There was also kind of another twist at the end of this movie when the scientist guy who releases all of the the virus, I guess, sits down next to a woman on the plane and she's like, my name's Jones. I'm in insurance. Mm-hmm. Did you like recognize that that lady was one of the scientists mm-hmm. from the future? I well, thought that's, it was- that's what I'm saying. Like they sent her to study the virus with him. Oh, I didn't interpret it, it like that, but that yeah. makes way more sense. Yeah. I was thinking that like she Like she's not there to kill him. She's there to like work with him and like figure out how to like cure the vi- the fucking thing. Oh, that makes because, sense. Because because it already happens that like like I feel like the virus being made and like being released was inevitable, right? Yeah, so that so what you're saying is that future just always stays the same. Like you can only make the present future better. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like Terminator. Yeah, it is kind of like Terminator. <laughs> okay. Even though it's not part of Terminator's overarching story, it just kind of happens that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so I thought that it was like, since it was in the past, that was like the past version of her. And she's like, oh, I'm in insurance and like, whatever because of the apocalypse she becomes this like crazy scientist for Uh no reason like you know she just like kind of embraced the power vacuum and i guess took over and Mm -hmm. that's how i read it but no you're definitely right that she's (laughs) back (laughs) back from the future okay that's way that makes way more sense (laughs) everything clicked yep yep that was it it all fell into place that's good (laughs) okay good 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 okay and then also we mentioned how Brad Pitt's group, the 12 Monkeys, their their form of protest was releasing all the animals. Mm-hmm. And there are some scenes of like wild animals running around Philadelphia. Oh, you wanted to talk about giraffe fighting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's a scene where there's like a bunch of giraffes running along the highway. And I can't, I think I just saw this in a YouTube video or something. It'll come back to me eventually. But wherever I was watching, they're like, have you ever seen a video of giraffes fighting? Like, it's crazy. Maybe it was like an iDubbbz. Th- you know what? I think it was Aerosol Fatty on an <laughs> iDubbbz video. Yeah. Anyway, for people listening to this, please look up giraffes fighting. It 
<laughs> it's exactly what you think it is, where they're like <laughs> swinging around their necks and hitting each other with their heads. Oh my god, bro! Whoa, <laughs> dude! Uh, oh shit! Oh, <laughs> what the fuck? Isn't it awesome? <laughs> Dude, they whip their heads around. <laughs> the necks are so like bendy. They're so long. I, I mean, I, I know they're like, I just wouldn't expect something like so to be so bendy, you know? I feel like- <laughs> They can really whip their heads around. <laughs> I feel like most of the time you think of a giraffe as like this super majestic, like, like peaceful, peaceful <laughs> yeah. herbivore, like. <laughs> but then I see just this like- video. <laughs> Okay. That's so strange. <laughs> Dude, I, I think I'm kind of scared of giraffes now. Could you imagine? I, I think you might that. get killed by a giraffe. I think what if it, you got like- I think a giraffe could step on you and you'd probably be pretty injured. Yeah, but what if it like, like whipped, whipped its, its head, head what, into what, you? Yeah, what if you like really got hit with a good giraffe hit? Like, yeah, I, I think, think you they might could, die. Do you think they could swipe that low? Oh yeah, did you see that? <laughs> What if it was like helicoptering its head around yeah. like General like, Grievous and the lightsabers? Like backing you into a corner like, no! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I think I'm scared of giraffes now. Have you ever, don't giraffes have weird ass tongues? Have you ever fed that a giraffe? That makes sense. I think, I, I think when I was a kid, that makes sense to yeah. like get the leaves off of long branches. Yeah. <laughs> giraffes yeah. are weird. So... We always watch Okay, six. wait, wait, wait. I The last thing I wanted to say was there's a TV show of this. Have you seen any of that? Like, I have not seen any of it, no. I feel like just, I don't I don't, even... I don't, I don't really have any interest. To be honest, I'm sure it's, I mean, I don't know anything about it, but I, I, I just don't really have an interest in it. It's, this is one of those movies where it's like, I don't really need a TV show of it. No, I, I, I completely agree. I feel like this is the definitive version of this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need a TV show. I guess it was good enough to have three seasons. I, I heard it was either three or four that I saw, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, I guess it's good enough to have three or four seasons, but... It was on sci-fi, I think. Okay, oh, so it was like a general... I don't know, I feel like I'm... Anything that's like a cable show, I'm just more a little bit more skeptical of. Yeah, that's fair. That's very fair. I mean, who knows if anybody's watched it and thinks it's yeah, good. Yeah, let us know, please. <laughs> <laughs> we we have no idea if it's good or not. Um, we'd be curious to hear how the difference is. But I I like I agree with you. I've got no, no uh, no draw real, yeah. to watch it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get into the fun stuff. Yeah, this so is the part I've been waiting for. We rank every time we finish a season. We we watch six episodes a season based around the theme. Obviously, this season is sci-fi. And at the end of each season, we always rank them. So for this season, um, if you're not following along, or we did uh, 12 Monkeys this episode, we did Her, Upgrade, Under the Skin, Fanboys, and- A Scanner Darkly. A Scanner Darkly. Should I, we go from worst to best? Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's yeah, easy. Fanboys was the worst. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fanboys is probably not worth watching now. Um, it's an old comedy about a group of nerds going to find the release of the first prequel movie, of the first prequel Star Wars movie mm -hmm. for their friend who dies. I agree. I feel like <laughs> Fanboys was easily the worst one. Um, I, okay, fifth best? I'm going to have to go with Under the Skin. I'm going to have to go with Under the Skin as well. Under the Skin was still... It was good, but it was good. just a little bland compared to the other ones. You know, like it's a very, I, I, okay, I guess bland is not a good word. A slow moving. It was definitely the most slow moving film. It, it, and definitely the most artistic, I guess, if mm. that makes sense. No, that, that makes sense. But I didn't think it was bad at all. I feel like really I would recommend everything else from this season except for fanboys. It's just as unfortunate as it is, out of what we uh, well, out of what we watched, Under the Skin is the next worst. But I would not say it was bad at all. Yeah, I would not let our ranking dictate its like worth. You know, there's a lot of good movies in this season. And in in the 
gigantic spectrum that there are movies fanboys is way low and <laughs> yeah. under the skin is way high so yep yep it was still good i yeah okay let's All keep right. going fourth that's tough this is where it gets hard i'm gonna go with upgrade um yeah i'll go with i'll to keep it in the same thing i'll go i was gonna say either her or upgrade but i think hers has a little more depth to it yeah, I agree. Although upgrade is just cooler, but you know, when you have a fucking movie where you have a robot chip implanted in your body to do karate moves on people, <laughs> yeah. it might be a little more interesting than Joaquin Phoenix <laughs> falling yeah. in love with his phone. I feel like but her is a great movie. Her is a great movie. So are you also putting upgrade at third worst? Yeah, at fourth. Let's say I'm. I'm doing that. I'm doing upgrade then her. Upgrade then her. Yeah. And then I do, oh, dude, 12 Monkeys and Scanner Darkly are like, they're very hard to choose between the two. I'll say a scanner than 12 Monkeys. 12 Monkeys But not the by best. much, but not by much. Cause I think uh, Scanner Darkly. I think we have the same Darkly. list. Yeah. Yeah. It's so hard though. I feel like they're so interchangeable. They are, they all are very interchangeable. Top four, easily interchangeable. Mm-hmm. We watch good movies this time. Usually we watch shit movies. <laughs> I know. I was also kind of hoping that, <laughs> well, never mind. I won't bring that up. <laughs> okay, well, this is also the next fun part. What are we doing for the next season? All right, well, we did our spinner thing with all our list of movies that we have compiled up and we landed on video game movies. Mm -hmm. And the first one we'll be Very watching exciting. is the uh, original Mario Bros movie. The one from the 80s. Let me look. I think it's the 90s, actually. Let me the look. The 90s, at, maybe. Let me look at the exact There's title. No, is it from the 90s? Super Mario Bros. 93. Uh, 93. Starring Bob Hoskins and John Leguzim, Leguzamo. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and Dennis Hopper as Bowser. Well, we'll probably take a little bit of a break here in between the seasons, but there'll still be episodes coming out with uh, movies that are being released concurrently, you know, like as we talked in the episode earlier, Avatar and... Um, Whale. And Whale. Uh, there'll definitely be episodes for that. But um, yeah, stay tuned, stay stay looking at our content. We'll be always posting stuff and we appreciate you guys listening. That's a uh, end of season three. Yes, thank you all for listening. Sweet. Bye-bye now. <laughs>